afternoon in your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. For the Bible says that where two or three are gathered in my name, my presence is there in their midst. And so, Father, we acknowledge and we know that your presence is here in our midst. We are gathered for one cause and one cause alone to exalt the name of Jesus. We are gathered for one cause and one cause alone. And that cause is to exalt the name of Yahweh, the name of Yeshua, Yeshua Hamashiach. We give you praise, Jehovah God. We worship your holy name, King of glory. This afternoon we decrease so that you may increase in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak an open atmosphere this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak an open atmosphere in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray this afternoon, may the portals of heaven open in the mighty name of Jesus. May the gates of heaven open this afternoon. May the windows of heaven open this afternoon for us in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord, King of glory. I pray, my Father God, that you will shower us with rains. I pray, King of glory, that you will shower us with rains. I pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord, you will shower us with your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Jehovah, King of glory, for the showers of your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, King of glory, as we worship, as we bow down, as we lift up our hands, to you be glory and to you be honor. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord, you will move in this house. Lord, may your power move. May your power move. May your power move. May your presence move in the name of Jesus. May your power move. May your presence move in a mighty way. In the mighty name of Jesus. May your power flow. May your power flow. May your power flow. May your power flow in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus that your anointing shall saturate this atmosphere. This afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord we shall experience the supernatural. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Jehovah God, we pray. Jehovah, let the angels of God ascend and descend upon this place. Let the angels of heaven ascend and descend upon this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We worship your holy name. We worship you, Jehovah God. We worship you, El Shaddai. We worship you, Elohim. We worship you, Yahweh Elohim. We worship you, Adonai. We worship you. Lord, I pray for the breath of God, the rock of God, the rock Elohim. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the eastern winds to blow over this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, King of glory, that the wind of the Spirit shall blow over this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, and every dead and dry bone shall begin to resurrect in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Arise, O God, in this place. We worship you, Lord. We worship your holy name. 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 We worship you, Yeshua. We worship you. 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 With your hands above your head, let's give the Lord a mighty, mighty, mighty clap of praise in this house this afternoon. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. And it is in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we have prayed and we believe and the church of God say a big amen come on I can't hear you destiny life church let's give the Lord a mighty clap a mighty clap come on come on come on let's celebrate the Lord let's celebrate the Lord let's celebrate the Lord yeah 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 oh come on oh come on let's celebrate let's celebrate the Lord Lord.
one, I can hear you. Praise the name of the living God. Now you can move around to two or three people and give them a big high five and tell them welcome to the Torn Veil concert. This is the Torn Veil concert. Torn Veil concert. Come on, come on, come on. Give someone a high five. Give someone a high five. Give someone a high five. Hey! Yeah! Amazing, amazing, amazing. So welcome to the Torn Veil concert. And we say in the Torn Veil concert, this is a gathering of thirsty souls that have unlimited access to the throne of God. Amen. And so the, our prayer this afternoon is as we worship, as we commune with the Father, as we commune with the Holy Spirit, we shall have an encounter in the presence of God. And I believe that our lives will never remain the same. Say, my life. Say, if you believe, say, my life will never, ever remain the same again. If you believe, give the Lord a mighty clap of praise. Now, I want to usher us into the first act, and I'll usher you into your seat so you can be seated in the presence of God. Today, we want to begin in style. So, are you ready for the first act? I, I can't hear you. Are you ready for our first act? Put your hands together as I bring on stage Derek for our spoken word. Come on, let's celebrate Derek. Let's put our hands together for Derek. Come on, come on, let's celebrate until Derek gets here. Come on, put your hands together for Derek. Praise God. How are you feeling? You're excited, yeah? God is doing amazing things today. All right, so this piece is called, it's inspired by the concert. It's called Torn Veil. And, um, It's based upon what happened when Jesus died on the cross. When at that time he breathed out his last and he said that it is finished. The veil that was in the temple, where only the high priests could go and commune with God, was torn into two. And God was saying that you now have access as you are. Because before that time, you had to go through the priest of that place. But now we have full access. Glory to Jesus. So let me tell you the truth. Jesus was not held on that cross by three nails. What held him was his love for me and his love for you. How is it that God Almighty desires man filled with fragility? His love mimics insanity that he wants to be one with me. One who struggles with sin, one who is unclean. He sees the void in my heart and he comes to feel. How can it be? How can it be that the creator of the world, he left all that he had and he came to be with me in the mud? He calls me his son. Oh, there is nothing I have done, nothing I have done to receive such love. Divine love in Jesus' arms. Oh, or in Jesus' arms. Clothed in our sin and iniquity, the King of Kings died for humanity, for us to have eternity, eternity. He tore the veil for divine intimacy, for the least one to be one with supremacy. Jesus, fill our beings, saturate our souls, fill our breath, we want you, Lord. Let us see your face, let us feel your love. Jesus, fill our beings, saturate our souls, fill our breath, we want your hold. Let us see your face, let us feel your love. Oh, Jesus, to see your face, to feel your love. Today, today is the, chain, the day that the chains are breaking, the day that we get the blessings, the day that we send a message, the day that we step in destiny, the day that we get deliverance, the day that we become the winners, Jesus our Redeemer, serving every sinner. Today the patterns change, today the sleepers wake, today the dead are raised. He's changing everything, everything, changing our mistakes into something great. It is a brand new day for He is emptying every grave. Jesus tore the veil 
Jesus tore the veil. Jesus tore the veil. Oh, he tore the veil for divine intimacy. He tore the veil too that we may be one, the least of us to be one with supremacy. Jesus, fill our beings, saturate our souls, fill our breath. We want your hold. Let us see your face. Let us feel your love. Tone veil, ladies and gentlemen. We declare that this is holy ground. Let me tell you something. <laughs> You're not here to stare at me. I'm not giving you a show. Amen? We are here to worship. We are here to worship. We are here to open up our hearts. We are here to give Him everything that we are. Today is not a show, today is for war.
is daring the presence of Yahweh. We silence it in the name of Jesus. This song I want to teach you. It's very simple. It just says, Nena Nami Baba. Nena Nami. Natamani Kukusikia. Nena Nami Baba. That is all. That is all. And that is my prayer. That I will silence everything that will dare come between me and my God. I want to hear 
hear from you. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. your salvation. There is nothing, there is nothing that you can do without Jesus. He is tried, he is tested.
something very small. The two songs that we have just sung come from an album called Conversations with God. God dropped these songs in my spirit when I was grieving. I had lost a pregnancy. I had lost what medics call a chemical pregnancy, meaning in the medical world, you are not pregnant. But my blood says I was pregnant. The baby stopped growing after two weeks. And as I was curled up in bed, just asking God, what's going on? The one thing I desire from you is a child. And then you allow them to stay two weeks and then they, what is this? And I started singing these songs in tears. I've never heard them before. I had never heard them before. And that is how these two songs and many others in an album came to. Your season of brokenness, God will bring out something. And not just for you, for generations to come. I would have chosen to continue singing those songs to myself. But I'm sharing them with you. I'm sharing my heart that God, He is God. Whatever you're going through, He is God. And I am a witness. Blessed. Just begin to lift up the name of Jesus in this place. If you're seated, can you wake up, be up standing? We want to begin our concert right now. So begin to lift up your hands above your head. Lift up your hands and begin to worship Jesus. Lift up your hand and begin to worship Adonai. Come on, in your own words, just begin to exalt him. Just to begin to magnify his holy name. We have already begun the session, so I need you to start preparing your heart for something amazing. Begin to prepare your heart. Come on, come on, come on. Let me see you worshiping God. Let me see you exalting the name of Jesus. Let me see you magnifying the name of Jesus. Can you just worship Jesus? Exalt the name of Jesus in this place. Oh, Just worship Jesus. Exalt the name of Adonai. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We invite you into this place to come and move and have your way. Do the impossible in our lives. We are here for an encounter. We are here for an encounter with the Adonai, the great I am. The veil was torn, and I want us to begin to access, access the King of Glory. Begin to access the mighty one. Begin to access the great one. We worship you, Jesus. We give you adoration, oh God. Blessed be your holy name, Jesus. Come on. With your eyes closed, in your own words, just begin to exalt him. In your own words, just begin to magnify him. Begin to access. Access the holy of holies. Begin to access the holy of holies. Just begin, begin. He's here. He's here. Just begin to access the Holy of Holies. Just begin to access the Holy of Holies. Maskatani anta kadaba sataya. Ikesh keteli anto kapale. Jesus, we exalt you. Jesus, we exalt you. Jesus, we exalt you. Jesus, we exalt you. Oh my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your holy name. Oh my God, be lifted in this place. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We exalt your name, Jesus. Hey, my God, my God.
that you're here for Jesus. He saved you, you are here.
Blessed be your excellent name, my God. We just want to lay all of our burdens at your feet. Just exalting you and magnifying you, my God. Jesus. Let your living words flow. situation to the king of glory today we are in the holy of holies thank you jesus all my cares and burdens unto you oh, my cares and burdens present those cares to 
today in the name of Jesus.
Oh, my Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Be glorified in this place. Be magnified in this place. We bless your holy name. Oh, we lift the holy gates that the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Who is this King of glory? Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong. The Lord mighty. Ah, Jesus, Jesus, one more time. Do not get tired. There is an open heaven. 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 Oh, Jesus. I saw the Lord seated on his throne and the train of his throne. Oh, Jesus. Feel the temple. Mass at Hey, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, hey, 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 my God, my God, my God, my God, hey, my Jesus, 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 oh, my God, I see you seated on the throne, my God. Jesus, oh, Masataya da 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 ba, Zeta kala da 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 bo, Sataya. Hey, Jesus, oh my God, my God, my God, you are highly lifted, my God. Jesus be glorified. Jesus be lifted. Jesus be lifted. Jesus be lifted. We call the name of Yeshua Hamashiach in this place. Ha, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, my God, my God, my God. Ma satalia da 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 bo Hey, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God. Jesus, oh Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the beginning and the end. You're the Alpha and Omega. O oh Lord, O oh Spirit of the living God. Mashete, Rakaya da Babosa. Rakaya Nanabe. Nime Chifunza Kudiliwa Nakufani Kiwa Katikayot. Wewe bado nimo Nina chua kushi Na kuona nja Katika yote Wewe bado nimo Acha upeba na ugume Mimi
Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Somebody give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Yeah. Give him praise on the way to the balcony. Give him praise. Oh, yeah. and amen glory to God I want to read a scripture while we are standing up I want to read a scripture in the book of Matthew Matthew 27 I want to read a scripture just to focus this concert and this time of worship in the presence of the Lord Matthew 27 while we stand I want us to read Matthew 27 starting with verse 35 Matthew 27 starting with verse 35 Right. Uh, if you have your Bibles, move there. It's a story we are all familiar with, and I believe that uh, God is going to speak to us through this passage of Scripture. For purposes of context, allow me to start from verse 33. When they were come to the place that is called Golgotha, that is to, the, to say a place of skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink verse 35 and they crucified him that's jesus and parted his garments and casting lots that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet they parted my garments among them and upon my vest, vest, uh, vesture did they cast lots and sitting down they watched him there and they set up over his head an accusation written this is jesus the king of the Jews. When they were there, the two thieves crucified with him, one on the right and the other one on the left. And they that passed by reviled him and wagging their heads, then saying, Thou art destroyest, thou that destroyest the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. And if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests mocked him and the scribes and the elders saying he saved others himself he cannot save if he be like the king of israel let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him a trusting in god let him deliver him now he will he will have him for he said i am the son of god the thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in their teeth. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, laba sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, they say, this man calls Elijah. And straight away, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Jesus, verse 50, when he had cried, again with a loud voice, yielded up his ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which left arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the city and appeared to many people. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and these things that were done. They feared greatly saying, truly, this was the son of God. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the reading of your word. I pray that this will be torn veil indeed for each and every one of us. In Jesus name I pray. 
Amen. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise as we welcome, as we usher out our worship team. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, worship team. You are coming back after a few minutes. I want to start by asking you to probably share with your neighbor, ask your neighbor who killed Jesus and get the answers because I may be coming back to you for answers. Who killed Jesus? Who killed Jesus? They answered you, right? All right. Winner, who killed Jesus? The soldiers. Okay. I'll pick on you. And I'll actually want to hear what your neighbor told you. Elder Martin. <laughs> who killed Jesus? The devil. <laughs> Tez, who killed Jesus? Human beings. Who knows what or who killed Jesus? Yes? Yes. There? Us. We are the ones who killed Jesus. You, you killed. <laughs> this girl is capable of killing such a, a mighty man. Move on to that gentleman with a checked shirt. Who killed Jesus? You know, I realized you people... Don't know who killed Jesus. Who killed Jesus? The Pharisees and the scribes. The Pharisees and the scribes. Move over all the way to where Daniel is seated. Yes. Daniel, who killed Jesus? I'm moving to elevate now. Okay, Jesus, he, he offered himself as a living sacrifice. So it was his own uh, sacrifice. Ah, give him a hand clap. <laughs> Jesus was not killed by anybody. Nobody, nobody had the power to kill Jesus. He gave up his ghost. He is the one that gave up. He would have stayed on the cross for 20 years and never have died out of the pain, never have died out of anything that men did. His flesh was gone. He was still alive. He alone had the power to release life. The Bible says he gave up his ghost. He would have stayed and hanged on. His life would still have been there. And he is the only man who can hold life. I want to start by saying that I am so grateful that we have this Tonville concert during a time when we are talking about the manifestation in this year, 2024. And one of the greatest aspects that are neglected by the church of our day is the manifestation of great worshipers in the house of God. We can manifest as many things. We can choose to manifest and pray to manifest in many ways but I am yet to see a manifestation of great worshipers in the house of God and I pray that this tone veil will be the beginning and the birth of a new era in our lives and here at Destiny Life Church there will be a birthing of new generation a new generation of unrestricted unlimited worshipers that will enter the Holy of Holies and that will be confident and bold to enter and storm the Holy of Holies every week, every day, every hour. Great worshipers. In the Lord of Rhodes, the Lord of Rings, you know the Lord of Rings? Have you read the Lord of Rings? I can see some of you smiling because probably you've read it. In the Lord of Rings, the doors of Durin, the doors of Durin were the prevention of the entrance into Moriah under the, the, the mystery the, the mystery mountains you know uh, the, the, the doors the doors of Durin were the ones that were preventing anyone from being able to enter into Moriah all right under uh, that was under the mystery mountains and uh, moving on uh, for those of you who probably didn't read and by the way by the time I'm done if you never read any of them you must have read the third one. And if you haven't, get out. All right, that second one, in the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. Now, how many of you have read that? Where? 
The lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. There is something called the mysterious wardrobe that prevented people from entering into Narnia. They were the prevention that, that and nobody would enter Narnia because there, were, there was a wardrobe, a mysterious wardrobe that prevented. If you haven't read all that, how many of you have read Harry Potter? Ah, this is really lit. Elevate you now in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. The three-headed giant dog. What was his name? You didn't read. You just read it up your head. The giant, the three-headed giant dog called Fluffy. <laughs> is the one that was blocking the entrance into the underground chambers. And lastly, the fourth one, which you should all know. In the Old Testament... And in the Old Testament temple, there was a thick curtain that stood between the worshippers and the presence of God. A thick curtain. Biblical scholars say that that curtain was about 60 foot tall. And it was about, it was about who knows how thick it was. How thick the curtain was. It was not like this one. Oh, it is already gone. Oh, the curtain has already gone. Ah, amen. Ah, it's already torn. All right, good. The curtain was about four inch thickness. It was thicker than the seat you're sitting on in terms of thickness. It was a thick curtain. I don't know how they had made it. But historians agree that the curtain was a heavy curtain. It was not just an easy curtain. Meaning that they were truly determined to prevent you from entering into the presence of God. And what was the reason? The reason was one, not so that you know, cannot get favor from God. Not that you cannot access the blessings of God. The reason why they were protecting the presence of God was so that you cannot die. They were protecting your life. Remember all the way from the Garden of Eden. Now when man sinned and he was kicked out of the garden, a cherub was given the work of protecting the presence of God so that you may not enter. Because there was a reason why. In the Old Testament, if you entered the Holy of Holies, peradventure with a single spot of sin, you would die. The Holy of Holies was not a common place. It was a place only entered by only one man in one year. So if you have only a hundred years to live as a high priest, you only have probably 90 times of chance to be able to enter the Holy of Holies because every year you are entering once and in your lifetime as a high priest. No one else has the chance to enter the Holy of Holies. Every time that the priest would come to now offer sacrifice on behalf of the, the children of Israel, he would come and they would tie a pain in his leg so that whenever he is going in, in case there was unrepented sin and he was in any way unclean, he would die. He would be struck and dead. So if there is no movement because there was a bell and the chain. So if there is no movement, you can't hear the bell ringing or the rattles ringing. Then you would know probably the priest is dead. Nobody would enter the Holy of Holies to remove him or to remove his body. So they had to use the chain to pull him out. The reason why the curtain was there is to protect your life. Why? Because of sin. The temple in Jerusalem was a center of Jewish religious life where sacrifices were offered. And every time that people would come to the temple, they would come with animals. Some of them would come with doves, others would come with lambs, others would come with goats, others would come with cows. And they would be able to slaughter so that the blood can be an offering and a sacrifice for atonement. Once every year, the entire country, the entire generation, the entire people would come all the way into one temple that was in Jerusalem. And they would come to offer 
sacrifices for atonement once every year. And when they would come, there were segre segregations, there were segments and sections of the temple that I would be coming to. And they would come and perform all rites of sanctification all the way from the back until they get to the place where each one of them fitted to worship from because there were segments and sections where each one of them was apportioned to be able to worship from. And the temple had those kinds of sections that are different kinds of features and different meanings, and I don't want to go into that. One of the features of the temple was the great curtain that protected the Holy of Holies where God's presence dwelt. Now, what was the significance of the veil? In the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says, the only thing that has separated man from God is, is what? Our sin. Remember, before we even get deeper, I want you to understand the Old Testament uh, setting and the Old Testament, Testament structure of worship. So that that way, therefore, you will understand why the curtain had to be torn, all right? And the worship in the Old Testament was a bloody affair. You can imagine, how many are we here? If we are a thousand, each one of us has slaughtered a goat. How many goats do you think we'll be having in this compound? How much blood do you think that will be sp spilled in this compound? And in, in, if in any way the blood that you shed was from a, an animal or a bird that had a spot, you had to go to look for another one and come and replace that one because it is not going to be accepted. Those of you who come from Okambane, you know, when you go to the witch doctors, you have to take the specifications of the thing that the doctor wants. Akisema kukunye kundu, utaitafuta mpaka mahali utaipata. Ukileta ingine, nisida. The specifications were tough and they were lethal because if you crossed then you risk your life. In Ukambani still, when you go to the doctor and you are done with the witch doctor and they tell you now you can get out, you can't get out, turn and get out. You have to go out like this. If you dare turn, Shauriako, you want to try? Welcome to Ketui. <laughs> so people had a lot of, you know, there was a lot of blood shedding. Because they needed to satisfy the demands of the Old Testament law of approaching a holy God. You had to satisfy that God is satisfied with my sacrifice so that you can enter into his presence. We celebrated Easter just a few days ago. And the story that we read in the scripture is about the story of a man called Jesus. Jesus who was arrested and went through a lot of things and we know the history and we know the story about what happened that led to his crucifixion. And during his crucifixion, one thing, one thing captures my attention. The last time I preached here, I said that I'm a lover of action movies. And anything in the scripture or anything in real life that looks like an action movie, I love watching. I love watching people fighting. I don't want to be part of it, but I love watching. You know, watching is better than being part, you know? It's just depending on your size and, you know, I mean, your skills and everything. Yeah, but for me, you know, it's the size, but it is okay. So you love watching when people are fighting. You know, I, I love to see how they exchange the blows and everything. I love to see this one wrestles, the other one, they get down and like, yeah, yeah. And some of us, we fight in the spirit. You know, we are, we are there fighting. Everywhere there is action, I want to be there. And so anywhere where the scripture comes into a space, a scene that looks like an action, then I am part of that. In the crucifixion of Jesus, everything went on no more. Everything went on no more. Until one time, at the sixth hour, the Bible says, at the sixth hour something happened. While they were jeering him, while they were, you know, laughing at him, mocking him, spitting at him, and saying all manner of things. And I believe the Bible could not record all of them because there were so many. Everyone had their own version. But the few that are given in the scripture are for our understanding. That he was really derided by people that were around him. 
they thought to him, Hey, who do you think you are? You said you are God. Save yourself. Get off the cross. And what are you doing there? You said you are God and everything. And they disregarded everything about what he did for the last three years to their community and the people that they had known to be blind. And now they see. People that they had known that they are lame. And now they walk. People that they had known they were dead. And now they were alive. Everything did not make a proof in their head and in their hearts and in their lives that Jesus Christ was still the Son of God. While still on the cross, they thought, we are done and dusted in this case. You are gone. Then I should have had... Because Nigeria. You know those things before something funny happens. Then all of a sudden, the Bible says... The entire universe. I love the Kikamba Bible that says, Nandi ayakibindu, yani the earth ate darkness. I tell you from the sixth hour to the third hour, the entire universe, then they ayakibindu. <laughs> now the action movie begins. It is all dark. And you can imagine the immoral soldiers. You can imagine the funny people around because it's now all suddenly dark. They were not prepared for that. They had not carried torches. It was during the day what was the need for a torch. They could be able to see everything clearly. And for hours, they were struggling to see the man on the cross. They were struggling to see the man that they were mocking. And the Bible says during that very hour, Simultaneously, when Jesus screamed, a few things happened. This is where the real action movie becomes, becomes more interesting. You can be sure every time I read that scripture, I repeat those verses. Narudivi, nasoma tena. Narudivi, nasoma. Because nilikuambia, napenda malikuna action. I go back, read, 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 read. It becomes more interesting. This dramatic portion of his crucifixion, the darkness covering the earth, and there was an earthquake. You people, do you know what? Galiliki, do you know what? Earthquake, do you know earthquake? Ama, you here? Yeah? You just here, you don't know what earthquake. Have we ever had earthquake in this country? My friend, just Google and see earthquake. It's not an easy thing. It's not a simple thing. Yeah? I saw the other one in, uh, in America the other day. And, uh, you know, the cars are moving on the road and they are dancing. You are driving on the road and your car starts dancing. And everybody begins to dance. If you don't dance for Jesus, an earthquake is coming to you. You dance. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. Earthquake is not an easy thing. The Bible says there was earthquake. And the Bible does not end there. The Bible says, and the tombs, the graves of the dead saints were opened up my friend if where you come from they bury people and they build they build wanatengeneza kamatofari hapa juu na wanatengeneza kakitu can you imagine you are there jesus is being crucified na huko calvary na wewe uko kwa nyumba umekalia kiti yako saa 9 ya jioni ukisoma tu newspaper ama ukifanya chenye unafanya overlooking your grandfather's grave and all of a sudden, it reopens. Pop! My friend. <laughs> so the tombs were open. And the curtains of the temple tore from, bottom to top, uh, to, from top to bottom. The third one is the most important. Because this is Stoneville concert. The curtain of the temple tore from the top to the bottom. At some point in Jesus' life and ministry, he walked over to the temple and he realized that the temple had been dirtified. The Bible says that he made a whip and he created chaos. Jesus never beat anybody. But he created chaos. You know the way mutu anashikanga panga, ataki kukokata, lakini anataka kukushitua utoroke. 
Pasi uliniambia you know I have to be compliant with elite language. Ulisema kuchitua mtu ni according to Shempeteng. So unashika panga. Eh hey, utebebe. Una 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 una, una, una ifanya hivi. Wa wa. By the time uamuke everybody has left. You are the only one. That's what Jesus did. He chukuad nyaunyo. Got into the temple. Na aka create chaos. Kwani nyinyi ni kina nani aka overturn the tables. Within a very short time everybody and people were in this array. People ran every direction. And they went out. What was he fighting? The discretion of the temple. And he kicked out the sellers. The people that were selling. People that were doing many things. Why was Jesus doing that? Because he knew. He was preparing them for the end. He was preparing them for the conclusion and the end of the matter. Why is it that the tearing of the curtain at the temple was the last thing that happened during that period? Because it was the culmination of his mission. Jesus Christ did that. The veil was a constant reminder. Was a constant reminder of the sin that separated men from the presence of God. And Jesus, the Bible says, for this reason was the man and the son of man manifested so that he can destroy the works so that he can deal with the curse of the law and the curse of sin in your life. And therefore, in conclusion, Jesus Christ died and offered his life on the throne, on, on the cross, and then at the end of his time, before he gave up his ghost, the Bible says the curtains were torn from top to bottom, signifying a completion of a mission. That now sin can no longer hold anybody that wants to come and offer their atonement before God. Sin can never separate man from the God of all creation. It was now finished indeed that he dealt with the separation between humanity and God. Before then, all humanity were unfit for the Holy of Holies. Even with all those sacrifices... You've entered, you've done your sacrifice, you've walked into the place where you are, whether you are a Gentile or a woman. And yet, even with all those sacrifices, once in a year, you are not per permitted and you are unfit to enter the Holy of Holies. But when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says that the curtain was dealt with. He removed the curtain that prevented men from the presence of God. Meaning that now sin has no more grip on you and cannot stop you from accessing God. Some of you are looking at me like, that's another gospel. Because sin can actually keep you away from God. No. Sin will never keep anybody away from God. It's only the choice that anybody makes that will hold them and keep them away from God. The Bible says, whosoever, tell your neighbor, whosoever. After the curtain was torn in two, it means that whosoever will, if you're willing, you can come into the presence of God regardless of who you are. Nothing should hold you. Three things and then I will be done. What was the significance of the torn veil? Number one. The torn veil represented a fresh and paralleled access to God. A fresh and paralleled access to God. It meant there are no more barriers. There are no more barriers. According to the temple, it was divided into some courts. The first court was the outer court. The outer court was meant to be, please get it well, the outer court was meant to be for the Gentiles. Because salvation was for the Jews. Salvation was for the Jews. So the Gentiles were other nations that were not recognized. So when they come to the temple, they stayed at the outer court. They stayed at the outer court. But when the temple curtain was torn, Jesus was nullifying, was nullifying the outer court. 
so that the Gentiles can now come, not just into the court of worship, but also into the Holy of Holies, direct. Talk about being promoted from being a cleaner to being the CEO. No more barriers. The now you were prevented, you are, your outer court was Nahuko. Let me give you an example of Destiny Life Church. If the Gentiles were to come for worship, assume this is the Holy of Holies. The Gentiles will be outside at the parking lot. That's where they were worshiping from. And they will not enter this way. Why? They were Gentiles. Then after that, there was another court. But before then, how did Jesus nullify the outer court? The Bible says, he says to all nations, come unto me. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that the culmination of the church age is a multinational, multilinguistic, multi-tribal worship in heaven. Meaning that the salvation that we enjoy today is actually extendable and extended to all nations, all tribes, all languages. Everybody is now a recipient of the salvation that Christ Jesus offers. We can now access God. Amen. Number two, Jesus Christ nullified the court of women or the women court. The women were not supposed to mix with the men in worship, the Jewish women. They were not supposed to mix with the men. So the women had a court. And the Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 that there is now therefore no difference between men and women, Jews and Greeks and Gentiles. All of them are equal heirs of the kingdom of God. So therefore, the veil has been torn. Regardless of who you are, you can actually enter the Holy of Holies. Even as a woman, with your mascot and your madras, you can enter the Holy of Holies. Let me take you back to 2007 when we were fighting in this country about the election results. Do you remember those, those days? Now stop looking at me like you don't remember. Do you remember those days? Do you remember them? Or oh, you were not there? You were children? Okay. All right. kwa <laughs> history. Do you remember 2007 when we were fighting in this country? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you remember how tensions ran high? Because you are a Kikuyu and there's a Lua in front of you. No, no, no. Let's be real. Let's be real. One as few. Do you remember how tensions ran high? Because your neighbor is Kikuyu and you are Jaluo. Do you remember? And do you remember how long that tension lasted? Until some people constructed statements and they printed t-shirts. Zilikuwa zinaitwa tribeless. Unakumbuka the tribeless movement? Kuna vaa kofia imeandikwa tribeless. Una vaa t-shirt imeandikwa tribeless. My tribe is Kenya. Ukikutana na mtu ukimuuliza unaitwa nani? Mike. Mike nani? Naitwa Mike. Tosheka na hiyo. Unatoka wapi? Mimi ni Mkenya. Na hiyo story inaisha hivyo, si kweli? From today moving forward, nobody on this earth is tribeless because God is not stupid. He created you and made you get born where you were born for a reason. I'm a proud kamba. Mwe Yesu na hata Na hata iwe Yesu. Yesu na hata iwe. Kwani iko nini? Mwe ina hata iwe. Yes. Yes, hata iwe mno. Na na hati indanesa, ni cha huyu. Be proud of who you are. God is not a fool. You are a kamba for a reason. You are a kikuyu for a reason. Come on. Ride that Mercedes S-Class, my friend. And in your bedroom, you have no bed. Ride the Mercedes Benz as the jalua that you are with pride. Yes. Kwani hiko nini? Hiko nini? Those of you that are in college, you understand. Get into a jalua's hostel. They have music theater. Yeah, 140,000. Now, I want a kitty, so far, I want a at a gas, I want a want a kulanga mess. My friend, be glad and proud to be a luo. Bounce it around and don't apologize to anybody for being who you are. 
Nobody's tribeless. I am not tribeless. My friend. Na mimi si mkenya. Na itwa Cyrus Kidzele na mimi mukamba kutoka kitui. Na mimi si mchawi. Ati yaki yao. Eh? Acha ayeja. Praise God. The last one so that we finish. Jesus Christ nullified the priestly court. He nullified the priestly court. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. If you can give me that one. That one I will wait for it. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. I want to read that scripture together with you because it has something that I want you to see. And that's one of the big the greatest and the most interesting reason why you are here today. Can you read it together? But you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous. I told you in the beginning. And you see, I wish we had the time for me to go to the details. Why is it that there was darkness? Why is it that there was darkness when the curtain was being torn into? Why do you think there was darkness? Because the bad thing of a new day is usually welcomed by the darkest hour of the night. Am I speaking to somebody? Jesus was in the process of birthing a new era. A new era and a new dispensation and a new covenant was being established. And so there was darkness. And immediately after that, the Bible says that you therefore became new priesthood. He now destroyed every other kind of a priest. Now you understand why some denominations in this country, some of which you come from, are wrong. The priest that you talked to before you came to destiny and gave your life to Christ was nullified over 2,000 years ago. Say amen. Look at your neighbor, Mwambie, kama wewe ni mukadho, tafadhali. Iyo kitu iliaribiwa kitambo, iyo order. The order of the Old Testament covenant and the Old Testament structure was completely destroyed. You got no business walking up to somebody and dis displaying your ignorance to just go and say, Father, I have come again. And then you put the offering and he says, Kwa sababu hii sadaka ni kidogo, zita kusamea, toka hapa wende. Hato likuja na hiyo last week. By the way, wanaongeanga hivyo. You know, I don't have that kind of an experience. We have a high priest called Jesus Christ who has already now destroyed the court of the priests. And all of us are priests before the Lord. We have the capacity to enter the Holy of Holies. The last one. Jesus destroyed the barrier of time. Men were only supposed to come to the temple once a year. Now, we've been given the opportunity to enter the Holy of Holies anytime, anywhere, anyhow. The Bible says, come unto me, O ye who... Come unto me. There is a clear divine welcome. Regardless of the time and regardless of wherever you are, you can enter the Holy of Holies. You can rabashanta in a matatu and rabashanta on the train. My friend, you can do that in the car without the presence of a priest. Can you turn to one, two, three people, tell them, you are a priest. Mwambie priest, priest Martin. Mwambie priest Castro. Priest priest so and so priest you can enter the holy of holies offer the sacrifice offer your worship to God because you are a priest <laughs> listen the moment the moment the curtain was torn in two the moment the curtain was torn in two, something else happened. 
God's residence moved. In the Old Testament, God dwelt in temples. And the section of the temple that carried God was the Holy of Holies. Therefore, the entire nation would gather at the temple once a year to pay homage to their God, to see God, to talk to God, helped by another man called a priest. The moment the curtain was torn into two, the residence of God moved. God moved away from the Holy of Holies. He is no longer at the Holy of Holies. The Bible says that whoever received Jesus and opened their heart, I will come in and I will come your Lord. I will become your Savior. I will sit at your heart. Inside your heart is the new dwelling of the Lord Jesus Christ. It had to get dark before Jesus can get into your heart. And you know, some of us, I know, You've heard a lot of gospel since you were born. You've said no to many invitations and many altar calls. And sometimes some of us are waiting and you do not know what you're waiting for. One day God will smoke you out. You know, when I was young, I was a very disciplined kid. <laughs> I know you don't believe it. <laughs> We are Mesema Evo Protocol Act. Unajua baba leo hayuko niko na protocol kama sita. Kuna mmoja alikuwa nani nani alikuwa wa kunipanguza sweat? Namusiambia baba. Listen. Some of you some of you are like me when I was young. When I was a small boy, I was very mischievous and my mom used to my mom was a real disciplinarian. And so my mom would wait. I would go do vitukos on my way from school. Then I come home. Then by the time nifike home, usha go sijui kulikuwa na shida gani. Unajua between the school and my home was about 10 kilometers. And so by the time me I'm getting home and you know people like me, sanguines and penguins, uh, no, sanguines and cholerics. We we don't we don't keep a straight line. We don't. Yeah. We don't keep a straight line. As when we are going home, where do we start? You take this line Go this way, go this way, go this way until you get home. Yeah? The others, they go straight like this. They get home. So by the time I am getting home, word has already reached home. Amepiga nani? Akapiga nani? Na nilikuwa napiga sana sana na mawe kwa sababu I was a small boy, tiny body, but, but I had the strategies. So nilikuwa na chapa majama kama kina Melvis hivi. Ju unajua nikimkaribia akinishika hivi kuna shida so mimi nilikuwa na chota nilikuwa natembea na mawe kwa mfuko jungori inaweza tokea any time ikitokea na chomoa and i was very good i was like a david my friend alafu na na we <laughs> so therefore listen so i would run and my mom would come and say oh hebu kuja ulifanya nini kwa njia na shangaa amejua aje. Kumbe kuna watu walikimbia tu wakakimbia mdomo bagi wakaenda wakasema alafu wakaenda kwao. So because I was very strategic. So when I'm talking to my mom and I know what I've done, I would keep a holy distance. I would keep a holy distance between me and my mom. So when my mom became bad and made a step towards me, I would also make a step backwards. She makes another step, I make another step backwards. And then When she becomes serious, I would run into the bush. Then my mom would say, would scream towards me and, and shout to me and say, "Enda tu, giza itakulete. Utaletwa na giza ama uletwa na bariti. Ama njaa. Utaenda tu, uzunguke, njaa ikulete. Ama uletwa na giza." And some of you you have run away from God for way too long. And God loves people more than anything. There is a darkness coming your way that will push you to church for the rest of your life. And if you're not saying amen, I say amen on your behalf. Whatever it takes, we are not leaving you here. We're going with you to heaven. The residence of God must change from the temple because it changed into your heart. So if you come to church to really seek God, he is not here. We carry God everywhere. 
I want you to look at the man seated next to you. If they're born again, get to know that girl, that guy or girl is a carrier of God. I am walking like this. I have God here. Ako hapa. Holy of holies, yiko mahali hapa. He is indwelling me. He is inside of me. The movement of the position and the residence of God moved from the Holy of Holies. It moved into the hearts of men. Lastly, lastly, the tearing of the curtain at the temple was to signify, was to signify that the price that was needed for men to access God has now been paid. You see, regardless of what you offered out there, the blood of that animal that you killed or that bird that you killed could not suffice to allow you to enter the Holy of Holies. But now that Jesus Christ has paid the ultimate sacrifice, God is now satisfied that men clothed by the blood of the Lamb can now come before his presence. The mercy seat is now open. We can now freely worship God. We can now freely get into the presence of God regardless. I began, and that's where I'm going to end, by saying that, you know, most of the times we think that whatever it is that you have done can actually take, a you, take you away and you, when you come back to God that it will not, you will not be allowed by God. Why? Because you have sinned. In the Old Testament, the reason why they had all those kinds of sacrifices is to deal with sin. So that you can be acceptable before God, you have to sacrifice so that you can deal with your sin before you come into the presence of God. Today, the Bible says, come just like you are. Do you understand that? Come just like you are. It means that that welcome is fitting for a prostitute who has been in the business for 20 years. It means that that welcome is fitting for a boy and a young woman who is struggling with masturbation for all your time. God has no requirement for you to set your record straight before you come. God has no requirement for you to go and delete all the numbers of those two girlfriends that you have, 20 of them, before you come. It means that you have no requirement to actually go set your life straight. Then now you come. And that's what is holding many people away from God. Why? You want to believe that you have to sort out yourself, sort out your life before you can now come. The New Testament and the New Covenant, the new dispensation of grace says that you can come just like you are. Come. Because we enter the holy of holy, we enter by the blood of the Lamb, and we enter to worship Him only, we enter to all. time we enter the holy of holies but one reason we enter by the blood of Jesus Christ we enter to worship you
because of what you have done. We enter to worship you only. We enter, we enter to honor you. Lord, I worship, Lord, I worship, I worship you. Every hand lifted and every eye closed right now. Yeah, yes, Lord. We came with a desire. We came with a desire for a soaking time in the presence of God. And some of us, you have been limited because you never knew why the veil had to be destroyed. Now the barriers have been taken care of manner of barriers in your life whatever was to prevent you from the presence of God has been destroyed by the blood of the Lamb whether it is your sin or whether it is a generation or curse whatever it was Christ pinned it to the cross so that you can be free and have the access unlimited access into the presence of God the Bible says come ye the way you are with your burdens with everything that has held you back from accessing the throne room of God and the mercy seat of God. Come running, come running, come running. He says, come running to the mercy seat. Come running to the mercy seat because the Lord Jesus is waiting. The Lord Jesus is waiting. It doesn't matter how long you have been hearing the gospel and saying no. This evening could be your evening. If you are among us and you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, this is the beginning of your open access to God. Through the God of all creation, the Bible says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens their heart, I will come in and I will become their savior. I want to make a prayer right now for somebody who is saying, I have had a veil in my life today. I need it removed so that I can access the Holy of Holies. If you are amongst us and it is you that I'm speaking about, shoot up your hand. I want to make a prayer for you. You know you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. This evening is your season and this is your day. Shoot up your hand. I'm going to pray for you. Every eye closed. In the moment of prayer, I want to ask one more time. If you are amongst us, it doesn't matter how long you've been in church. It doesn't matter how long you've heard the gospel. You have never allowed Jesus Christ to become the Lord and Savior of your life. I want to give you this opportunity. I want to give you this opportunity. I want to give you this opportunity. I want to allow you to be a part of the throng that walks into the Holy of Holies. Be part of the crowd that walks into the Holy of Holies. Anytime, anywhere, you will have eternal access to the mercy seat of God. Shoot up your hand. I am waiting. Shoot out that hand. Shoot out that hand. We are patiently waiting. We are patiently waiting. Waiting for you. Yeah, la mama mama goze. Yo. I have a conviction in my spirit. That I am speaking about somebody who is in this congregation. 
there are many things that have acted as veils in your life hindering you from experiencing the presence of God if that is you shoot up your hand in this very congregation if that is you I'm talking about shoot up that hand thank you for that hand thank you for that hand I have a conviction that she is not the only one if it is you that we're talking about right now thank you for that hand I've seen that hand again shoot up your hand thank you for that hand shoot up that hand I am waiting for another hand this is not the Holy Ghost I am just feeling in my spirit there is somebody here who was struggling who has struggled with a veil a veil that has kept you away from the presence of God for way too long you say enough is enough I'm sick and tired I want to come into the Holy of Holies and enjoy the presence of God shoot up that hand come running come running to the mercy seat where Jesus shoot up that hand thank you thank you I want all of us to make a prayer with those three that have raised up their hands lift up your hands everybody and I want you to make this prayer together with them those of you who had your hands lifted up I want you to make this prayer from the depths of your heart I want you to say after me say Lord Jesus I believe you died on the cross and you shed your precious blood so that I can be saved from my sin and right now I ask you to come into my heart save me from my sin redeem me from the destruction that sin has caused in my life from today I surrender myself to you I ask you to save me in the name of Jesus and by faith I now accept you as my Lord and Savior and now by faith I am born again in Jesus name amen okay can we clap an offering to the Lord give the Lord a clap offering and let's celebrate him I've seen the gentleman and the two ladies after this I want you to see Castro please raise your hand that's Castro after this I want you to see Castro and I want you to begin a new move among the people that lifted up their hands and some who are still here in this congregation and probably I need to make a prayer for such kind of people there are people who have given their lives to Christ way too many times you just keep going back and going back and going back today you are safe go back tomorrow you're safe go back and every time an altar call is made you still make it if you are that kind of a person here in this congregation please don't leave that gate today I want to talk to Pastor Soki immediately after this there's a special conversation we need to have with you am I speaking to somebody if you are that kind of a person because I believe there are people here the reason why you probably even feel shy to raise up your hand is because you've been way too many times at the altar this evening don't leave that gate I want you to find Pastor Soki na msianza kuangalia mwenye anaongea na Pastor Soki mufikirie ni yeye pia hata salimiwa na watu wengine wenye wako soba na hata wewe mwenye utakuja bado uko soba you're looking for a solution may you find it tonight in Jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. raise up your hands let me make a prayer Father I want to bless every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that from today moving forward there's gonna be a release in your worship life that you will no longer be hindered by anything in your life that there is nothing that will qualify to be a curtain or a veil in your life you will access God unlimitedly and without any form of barrier in the name of Jesus Christ you are pride aside you are class aside regardless of who you are that you will be so given out to worshiping God 
at the Holy of Holies. Every time, anywhere, anyhow, in the name of Jesus. I release you to be a beacon in your workplace. I release you to be a wonder and a sign in your college. I release you to be a wonder and a sign in your estate. In the name of Jesus Christ, be an unrestricted worshiper. In the name of Jesus Christ, from today, the veil has been torn in your life. Be a great worshiper to the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We can give God a better clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. The veil has been torn. And now we can approach the throne of grace directly to the Father. It's just like Mary that time. Mary, she saw Jesus face to face. And she had the opportunity to pour oil at the feet of Jesus and wipe the feet of Jesus with her hair. We can't see Jesus physically, but our worship, your act of worship, your vulnerability, your ability to release yourself before the Lord, that is your alabaster jar. Are you ready to break it before the Lord? Are you, ready, are you willing to tell the Lord, I'm going to break my alabaster jar and stay at your feet? Right there at your feet, that's where I want to dwell. My name is Eunice Tuma Mombela. <laughs> and I'm really excited and humbled and honored for this opportunity that uh, the pastoral, Pastor Harold, has given unto me. And uh, I want to minister unto us with, uh, I wouldn't say my song. I'll say the song of the Lord because the Lord is the one who gave it to me in a place of worship. I was worshiping and I was in my personal time of worship. And as I was just worshiping, this song came into my heart and I started singing it. And I felt um, prompt to record it on my phone. And from the phone, we took it to the studio. And here we are. And I pray that it will minister to your heart, that it will stir up your desire to stay at the feet of Jesus. Because there is no other main business that the Lord has given us but to worship him. Can I tell you a secret? The Lord has a, a good habit of elevating, of lifting, of blessing worshipers. We don't struggle. Worshipers don't pray for things. The Lord gives it to them. Because you are breaking your alabaster jar and your fragrance of worship raises to the Father. You don't need to tell him what you need. And therefore, you can sit down, but I see we're already in the mood to stand. So let's remain standing as we worship together. Amen.
your feet, oh God. We just want to dwell in your presence. We just want to dwell in your presence, oh God. At your feet, oh Lord. At your feet. Right there at your feet, oh Jesus. Right there. Alright, so I request all of us to be upstanding as we enter the final set of our Tone Veil Concerts 2020. 
24. Have you been blessed by that word? Have you been blessed by that word? Let's appreciate Pastor C. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together. Amen. Yes. To me, I'm in the kingdom of God, there are no brokers. There are no middlemen. There is no going to a father to confess because God is your father. Amen. So are you ready for the final set? Are you ready now? Are you ready? Piano space, piano space, piano space, you know, piano space. Aya, what do you want to do with Police are coming to the in three, two, one, Vuvuzela Nipatie. Vuvuzela in three, two, one, Nipa Vuvuzela. We are ready. Now, if your neighbor, listen, if your neighbor is looking suspicious, get another neighbor. If your neighbor is looking suspicious, get another neighbor. Ah, uh -uh, get another neighbor. Sasa to Efikaila Wakati. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time. Now, with the joy of the Lord, with the joy of the Lord, with the joy of the Lord, with the joy of the Lord. Hey! Mukoredi kudi Are you ready? Are you ready? Put your hands together for the Destiny Worship Team for the final set, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, come on, come on.
家转的。
thank you, thank you. It's been an honor. It was a great. Nico, 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 Nico,
Nikona, 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 reason ya ku. I've heard for I just can't seem to find a reason to believe that I could pray free. You see, I have been down so long. I feel like hope is gone, but I will leave my hand. I understand that I should praise him to him. Every 
everything that could go wrong all this harm and one time so my pressure fell on me i thought i'm gonna lose my mind but i don't know you want to see oh, He broke the chains. He broke the chain. 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 So shake the hand of your neighbor. Angalia Jirani. Angalia Jirani. Angalia Jirani. Angalia Jirani. Ambio Jirani. Blow, blow. Angalia Mwe. Ah, Mwe. Zema boom. Zema boom, boom. Ah, sawa, sawa. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now. And forevermore, lead parents, mbariki sana, lead generation to baki. I am bound to an elebasi. Bound to an elebasi. That was true. Yeah. I, I, Frank to an elebasi. We go. We shuffled on my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. 